I was given some solid state relays and considering their low cost point, I reviewed to see if they are better quality and would be a good replacement for the Fotec SSR source from eBay that I commonly use, but which unfortunately are well known to be fakes with underrated triacs. See my previous video, the link is in the description below if you want to see further information about these. The old adage, you only get what you pay for, is undoubtedly true. However, in the hobby DIY situation, cost is a concern and cheaper, less well-known brands can be good if used appropriately and your design takes into account their limitations. As part of the review, I disassembled the SSRs to check the rating of the internal triax and to avoid any suspense, the triax are properly rated. And to further save you time, the video description has a timeline index if you want to skip directly to a particular section. The review starts with disassembly of the SSRs, then testing of a number of 240 volt AC electrical appliances that can be plugged into the solid state relay to give a real world assessment of the ability of the SSR to handle a range of currents up to 10 amp. Finally, I use the solid state relay to make an automatic switch for my cross cut circular saw that starts a 240 volt AC powered vacuum cleaner for dust extraction when the saw trigger is pressed. This shows how the SSR can be used to make a useful DIY modification to an AC powered consumer item. Before getting further into the details, the obligatory self promotion. One conclusion from my previous YouTube video on Fotec SSRs, corroborating other similar YouTube videos that actually pull apart these solid state relays to look at the internals, is that the triac, which is the main component as such for switching the AC, are only rated for half the amps as stated on the SSR faceplate. It is pleasing to note that this is not the case for this Sketty Queen brand. Of the three items I disassembled, a 10 amp, 20 amp and a 40 amp rated on the faceplates, the internal triax were indeed appropriately rated as per the data sheets. However, note that while the SSR with the 10 amp on the faceplate uses a BTA16 triac, which has a maximum rating of 16 amp, and this overrating of the triac is good for a planned use of 10 amp with the SSR, but with the SSRs that have a 20 amp and 40 amp on the faceplate, even though they use the appropriately rated triac internally, the rating is for a maximum current of the triac. So these SSRs should be used with a circuit using a D rating of the expected maximum normal current to be handled. So overall, these Kitty Queen branded SSRs give more confidence in being useful when used appropriately, given that appropriately rated SSRs are being used internally compared with the faceplate of the SSR. The actual mounting case, the backing plate and the terminals appear to be solid enough construction so worthwhile to continue the physical testing using the various AC appliances. Using an SSR to control an AC appliance is relatively straightforward and I show later how to incorporate the SSR into controlling a vacuum cleaner for a dust extractor. But in order to allow easy and safer use of various appliances to physically test the Kitty Queen brand SSRs, I made this test setup which enables plugging in an AC appliance to a standard AC socket to give the load to the SSR. The circuit has a DC control side with DC negative connected to SSR terminal 3 with the black wire from the battery and then SSR terminal 4 via the red wire going through a switch and then to the positive terminal of the battery. AC power is provided at the rear left hand side with active, the brown wire, connected to terminal 2 of the SSR whereas terminal 1 of the SSR then goes via the red wire to the front standard AC plug socket and then returns from the front standard AC socket via the black wire to the AC neutral at the rear. Since working with mains voltage is dangerous, this setup allows me to more easy and safer use the SSR with various AC appliances for testing the reliability of the SSRs in actual use. The testing will involve monitoring the temperature of the SSR heatsink versus time using a thermometer and applied current via a multimeter. The typical failure of these SSRs is melting down under load. A number of 240 volt AC electrical appliances will be plugged into the solid state relay to give a real world assessment of the ability of the SSR to handle a range of currents up to 10 amp, which is my maximum use case. 
solid state relays should be mounted on an appropriate heatsink, with the backing plate on the SSR only likely being sufficient for small loads. I have mounted the SSR onto an aluminium heatsink as shown. This heatsink is just what I had on hand and has not been calculated from the specs in the data sheet, but with passive cooling should be sufficient for the 10 amp continuous load. I'll spare you any further tedium and skip the actual measurements and go straight to the recorded results. So, in summary, this graph shows the results of monitoring the solid state relay heat sink temperature over time when various continuous load currents were applied. I also measured the DC current draw when the SSR was on, which was about 14 milliamp. And it appears that this solid state relay is a useful component, with the heat sink only getting to about 50 degrees with a 10 amp load applied for 90 minutes. All this testing is well and good, but nice to show the item in an actual application. So I used the SSR in a very basic simple circuit, housed within a 3D printed enclosure, to hold the SSR and a 9 volt battery that allows an AC appliance to be controlled by a simple DC powered switch. And then mount this DC switch to be triggered by the blade guard release on my compound miter saw which means I can automatically turn on and off a vacuum cleaner for dust extraction when using the power saw without having to physically modify the miter saw. Here you can see this in operation mounted on the compound miter saw. The DC switch is mounted so that when the blade guard release is moved, the SSR is turned on, as can be seen by the red LED lighting. Plug the SSR into the AC mains power and then the vacuum cleaner or other AC appliance into the other end. Now you have control over the AC powered appliance. This relatively simple modification now means that the blade guard release also turns on the dust extraction without having to physically modify the saw. If you found this video useful, I would appreciate if you could take the time to like, comment and or subscribe.